It was so good seeing a lot of you today for Wonder Wednesday. And you all asked that our next meeting be next Friday. So not this Friday, but next Friday we'll have another meeting. I'll try to find a Kahoot or something for us to play. We can also look up some of the other questions we didn't get to today. Um, and then after that, I'm going to have to go back to work at summer camp for a week and start getting ready for this next school year. Um, but today, we are going to read chapters 5 and 6 of The Magnificent Makers, How to Test a Friendship. So where we left off, they were in the maker maze, and Dr. Chris explained to them they have 120 minutes to complete some challenges. And they were like, what happens if we don't finish it? And she was like, well... If you don't, then I'm not going to be able to invite you back. So it doesn't sound like anything bad's going to happen if they don't complete the challenges, but if they want to be able to get back into the space and, you know, do some cool science, they're going to have to complete these challenges. So let's see what happens next. Chapter 5. A hologram of a fox hovered over the middle of the board. This one is easy, said Violet. Foxes are predators. They hunt other animals. It must be a consumer. Deepak and Pablo nodded. Violet reached for the fox. Be careful, Deepak shouted. Pablo laughed. Que pasa? It's a hologram, remember? Deepak blushed with embarrassment. Violet pulled Pablo close and whispered, Why are you being so mean? I'm not, Pablo replied. He shook her off. As he walked toward the fox, it growled. Whoa, Pablo cried. Violet and Deepak laughed quietly. Don't worry, Pablo, said Dr. Crisp. It can't hurt you. She signed the maker's honor. Pablo took a deep breath and grabbed the fox. Bizzat! He put it in the consumer square. The square flashed purple. Ring ding dong! One down, three to go, shouted Dr. Crisp. Hurry, hurry, makers. Don't be too slow. A group of mushrooms appeared. Those must be producers, said Pablo. I don't know, said Violet. She explained that mushrooms grew in a compost pile in her backyard. My dad says the mushrooms help break down the compost. I think they're decomposers, suggested Deepak. Violet agreed. Mm, Papa's looking a little annoyed. But mushrooms are plants, and plants are producers. Pablo tapped his foot impatiently. Actually, mushrooms are a kind of fungus, said Deepak quietly. I learned about them at science camp over the summer. But Pablo wouldn't give in. Come on, Pablo, it's two against one. We can't move them unless you agree with us, Violet said. Pablo shrugged. Violet tried to grab the hologram. Her hands passed right through the bunch of mushrooms. Pablo checked his watch. 100 maker minutes left. Fine, he mumbled. Mushrooms are decomposers. Violet reached for the mushrooms. This time she could pick them up. Ring ding dong. A fern plant appeared on the game board. That was easy. Producer, the trio yelled out. Deepak set the fern in the producer square. Then a hologram of a crow popped up. There's only one square left. Crows are scavengers? Pablo asked aloud. I once saw a bunch of crows eating roadkill, added Violet. It was pretty gross. Remember, scavengers are like bigger decomposers. The whole board game started flashing purple. Bada bam boom, said Dr. Crisp, as she played an imaginary drum set. You've mastered the first level makers. She hopped up on the board and gave everyone high fives with her invisible drumstick. Violet and Deepak hugged. Pablo was happy they beat the level two. For some reason, he didn't really feel like celebrating. Okay, makers, let's see where the maze sends us next, said Dr. Crisp. She grabbed the maker manual out of her backpack. It flew open and the pages began turning. When they stopped, the page read, Level two, on the hunt. Go to Newburg Lake. Forward, march, Dr. Chris began, stomping toward the lake. Violet grabbed Deepak's hand and dashed after Dr. Chris. Pablo watched his best friend and Deepak run off. He dragged his feet as he followed them. Mm. Getting a sense that he might be a little, a little jealous, maybe. When they got to the lake, Dr. Chris asked, who's ready to go on a scavenger hunt? She winked, but not just for scavengers. The kids smiled and raised their hands. Dr. Chris pressed a button on her watch and projected a list into the air for everyone to see. You have to find each of these in order to complete the level. You'll also have to decide where they fit in the ecosystem, said Dr. Chris. But first, she added, holding her finger in the air, 
You will need to make a boat. Oh, cool, said Violet. But we're just kids. How can we make a boat? Asked Deepak. You aren't just kids, replied Dr. Chris. You're makers. She opened the maker manual to a picture of a plastic bottle boat with a list of instructions. As Pablo, Violet, and Deepak read them, Dr. Crisp reached into her backpack. Stand back! She tossed her rainbow hair out of the way and started grunting and making strange noises. Then she slowly pulled a giant plastic bottle out of her bag. It was the size of a small school bus. The trio's mouth fell open. You had that in there the whole time? But how? asked Pablo. Dr. Crisp just kept digging. She pulled out some glue, three large rubber bands, two long pieces of wood, and two big plastic spoons. I need a backpack like that, said Violet. I do too. Dr. Chris turned toward the makers with a big smile. She raised both hands over her head and then lowered them quickly. Ready, set, make. Oh, wow, that really is big. Chapter six. Pablo, Violet, and Deepak got to work. First, they had to attach the two pieces of wood to the plastic bottle using rubber bands. Violet bit her lip. I have an idea. Give me a hand, she said to Pablo and Deepak. They lay the two pieces of wood on the ground and rolled the giant bottle on top. Some of the wood stuck out behind the bottle. That's where the motor has to go, said Violet, looking at the instructions. Pablo picked up one of the bands. Are these going to be big enough, he asked. The rubber bands were big, but not that big. Dr. Chris slid into a yoga position. Looks like you'll have to give them a stretch, she said, arching her back in cobra pose. Pablo pulled the band a few times to loosen it up. Somebody will need to climb on top to help get the rubber band over the bottle, he said. I'll do it, said Deepak. Are you sure? You might fall. Splat, said Pablo, clapping his hands together loudly. Pablo, Violet frowned. Deepak focused on the bottle, and he ran and jumped as high as he could. He landed smack on the side and started to slip. Be careful, shouted Violet. Deepak gripped the bottle tightly. He slithered up the side and made his way to the top. Jumping bell jars, cheered Dr. Crisp. You did it, Deepak, said Violet. Pablo kicked at some rocks on the ground. It wasn't even that high, he mumbled. Violet turned to Pablo. Then why didn't you go up there? How will you make it to space if you won't even jump off the ground? I'll use my spaceship, Pablo yelled back, but Violet was already heading toward the bottle. Come on, she said over her shoulder. Pablo and Violet were able to get the rubber band around the free ends of wood without any trouble. Violet squatted down and gripped the rubber band. Now get on my shoulder, she said to Pablo. Huh? He replied. Hurry, she said. Pablo climbed onto Violet. Hey, she screamed. Watch out for my hair. Sorry, geez, he said. Violet pulled the rubber band up over her head and passed it to Pablo. You have to stretch it enough so Deepak can grab it, she told him. Deepak lay over the edge of the bottle and reached toward Pablo. Pablo stretched the band as much as he could. This thing is going to snap, he grunted. Keep trying, said Violet. Pablo pulled even harder. Somehow he managed to get the rubber band into Deepak's hands. Thank goodness Violet was so tall. Pablo hopped off her shoulders. They helped roll the rubber band around the bottle. Way to band together, maker, said Dr. Crisp. She has some good puns. The trio did the same for the second rubber band. Now we have to make the motor, said Pablo. He grabbed the big two spoons. Come on down, Deepak, yelled Violet. Violet and Deepak broke off the curved spoon heads. They glued them together with one facing up and the other facing down. Pablo tied the last rubber band tightly around the loose edges of the wood. Then they glued the spoon head motor to the middle of the band. Ring, ding, dong. Now that's how you build a boat, said Dr. Crisp. All aboard, makers. The trio ran to the bottle. Deepak climbed up easily. He turned around and pulled Violet up next to him. He tried to help Pablo up too. I can do it by myself, said Pablo, as he made his way on top of the boat. Dr. Crisp took a seat on the wood near the motor and wound it up. The boat shot out into the water. All right, we're going to stop there. I'm interested to hear what character traits do you think our three main characters have? I'm really getting some strong senses about uh, Pablo, but I'm interested to hear what you guys think first. So let me know 
What are some character traits you think Pablo, Deepak, and Violet have based on what we've seen about them so far? 